God, you deserve it all. We give you the glory this morning. We praise your holy name. Your word says your faithfulness reaches to the heavens. We can't even comprehend how faithful and how loving you are, God. But we believe it. Help us to keep our eyes fixed on you as we read your word today. And may it change us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Very nice. Good singing today, wasn't it? Good singing. Good worship. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Today we're going to look at verses 9 through verse 13. We've already seen in chapter 6 that Jesus says, don't practice your acts of righteousness to be seen by other people. Don't hire trumpet players to, to, to cause everyone to look over it and see that you are doing an act of righteousness. You are giving to meet a need. We don't give to meet needs to be seen. And he says, do those kind of things in secret. Don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. And then in verses 5 through 8, Jesus says, same is true when you pray. He says, don't be like the hypocrites. They pray out in open. They pray in public so they can be seen. They want everyone to know how righteous they are. They want everyone to know how religious they are. And he said, that's just not the way it's supposed to be. And he says, I don't want you praying like the Gentiles who just babble the same thing over and over and over. And he says, I want you to go into that closet, shut the door and pray. And so he's not saying that all public prayer is not to be done, but he's saying that it needs to be between you and the Father. When you pray, it's not so other people notice that you're a prayer, praying person, but when you pray, it's not just uttering words and religious words and so that you, you know, rise in everybody's estimation, but you're truly connecting with God. And then in verse 9, Jesus said, pray then like this. Jesus did not say, pray these exact words. He did not say, this is how you pray. He said, pray then like this. Now, Verses 9 and following, verse 13, we know that to be the Lord's Prayer. And it is okay to pray the Lord's Prayer. There's nothing wrong with praying the Lord's Prayer. The only time it's ever wrong to pray the Lord's Prayer when you're just saying the words, when you're just going through the motion of it. Someone say, let's recite today the Lord's Prayer. And everybody joins in in unison and they pray together. Let's do that this morning. Let's, let's say together Lord's Prayer. And, and say it with me. We're going to do it in the English Standard Version today. One, two, three, go. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. That wasn't wrong. It's okay to pray the Lord's Prayer, but it's not okay to talk with God and not really talk to Him. That's not okay. It's not okay to use religious terms and you don't really connect with God. You see, it's not the words we say that matters. It's the communication that matters. And the Lord says, when you pray, pray like this. And so the Lord's Prayer is not so that we pray those exact words. The Lord's Prayer is a format, an outline. It's giving us the ingredients that we need to pray about. And so cover these things. Talk with the Lord with these things in place as you talk with the Lord. Pray then like this. And there's something really interesting here in the Lord's Prayer that oftentimes I think is overlooked. But each one of these ingredients, these five topics, these five frameworks, these five guides that the Lord gives us here is exactly what we all need. Isn't that interesting? That every single one of us need these things. There's not one of us that doesn't need these things. 
And so the Lord Jesus gave us a pattern to use to, to guide us to pray. And, and these five things are exactly what we need. Let's, let's go through them and have a look at it. Verse 9. Our Father in heaven. The word for Father is Abba. Many people translate that to mean Daddy. And I've even heard some people say, Our Daddy in heaven. Okay? It's all right. Uh, I choose to say our Father in heaven. I get a little bit queasy when I think about praying to our Daddy in heaven. But literally, that's what that word means. Our Father, our Daddy, our partner, our guide, the one that loves us. And he says, hallowed be your name. The word hallowed means holy. And so we need this. We need to have as healthy as an understanding of who God is that we can possibly have. And these two things are required for us to have a holy idea, of, I mean, a, a good, healthy idea of our Father in heaven. He's Almighty God. He's the Creator, no one more powerful. He's completely holy. He will by no means clear the guilty. Sin will be punished because He is holy. Sin will be punished because He is true and He is perfect to His character. On the other hand, He's our Father in heaven, that close relationship. He's loving. He's gracious. He is forgiving. He is understanding. He is patient with us. He waits and waits and waits for us to get it. He is slow, slow to anger with us, quick to hear with us. He is our advocate. He, that means He stands alongside of us. He's for us. He's with us. He will not forsake us. Our loving, heavenly Father. And so we pray with awe and respect that He is hallowed. And we also pray with that understanding that we are unconditionally loved by Almighty God and there's no one quite like that in love. And so we have a personal relationship with the Lord. All of us, every single one of us have a need and that need is to have a healthy understanding of who God is. Who God is. And so we begin our prayer. We begin talking with the Lord a time of, of adoration, a time of praise, a time of worship. Before we get to our petitions, before we get to our requests, we need to have a statement about who we believe that He is. We acknowledge Him. We worship Him. We adore Him. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be Your name. Doesn't get any better than having a personal relationship with Almighty God. Our Father who is in heaven. Our Father in heaven our loving, caring, guiding, patient, everlasting love, Father, in heaven, hallowed be your name. No one quite like you, God. No one quite like you. I, I bow before you today recognizing that you love me, that your love is unconditional, that you have provided for me, that you are all I need. I need you desperately. I love you, Lord, and, and you are holy. You are worthy of my respect. You are worthy of my awe. You're worthy of my fear. Lord, I, I come before you with a respectful, with, with a healthy fear of you. I know you love me, but I recognize, God, that, that you, will, you will judge all sin, and you have every right to judge sin. You have every right to judge the sinner. You are almighty God, but you are loving, caring. Thank you for that personal relationship that I have with you. And so you begin by saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. We all need that. We all need that healthy relationship with our Father. The second aspect of this prayer is, and we need this as well, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come. Boy, do we need his kingdom. Man, the world is just 
worthless. The world is complicated. The world is nasty. The kingdom of man, the very best that man can bring in his worldwide kingdom, in his man's way of doing things, really is a problem for us. It causes greed. It causes issues. It causes problems. Uh, Susan and I drove to Texarkana this weekend, and, and we listened to a, a, a podcast about Billy the Kid. I love the story of Billy the Kid. We've been to Lincoln. We studied all that. We've listened to tapes back in the day. Uh, I just love the idea of all that took place and how difficult it was then. But, but if, if you take all the issues that McGarrett had, that Billy had, that Tunstall had, that John Wayne Chisholm had, remember the old movie Chisholm, John Wayne, probably about 25 years old. Tunstill was 25 years old. He wasn't the old man, old English man riding on that buggy. He was a young guy when he was killed. And, and all this would not have happened if it wasn't for greed. None of that would have happened if it wasn't for greed. It all happened because a few people wanted all the money. And that's why the killings happened. That's why the evil happened. That's why the lawlessness took place, because of greed. If, if we turn this world over to the world, it's going to be like the Lincoln County War. It's going to be killing each other. It's going to be mayhem. And, and did you know that uh, one of the leading characters in the, in the uh, Lincoln County Wars was a fellow by the name of Dick Brewer? I got to go check him out. He didn't last very long. He was killed, but nevertheless, he was part of all that maneuvering, all that politicizing, all that hate. And it all come down to one guy having all the money in the one store. And that's what it was about. All that evil happened. If we, uh, if we allow Satan to have his way, if, if we don't be those forceful men that take a hold of the kingdom of God like Jesus said we should, we will have absolute chaos in our town, in our state, in our country, in our world. And so we need your kingdom come. We need God's grace. We need God's love. We need God's caring. We need God to come and do away with greed and cause people to love God so much that greed is gone and we help other people, we care about other people, and we take care of things and we love unconditionally and we forgive and we're merciful and we're kind and we're gentle and we're embracing of people with all their warts and hang-ups and problems because it is His kingdom. And so we need to pray, Father, do business here in my world. Do business here. May your strength fall. May your spirit fall in our church, in our town, in our community. Things are nuts. Things are crazy. The world is having its way. Lord, we need your kingdom to come. And so after we've prayed and prayed in fellowship with God and prayed acknowledging that He's our almighty heavenly Father, that He is holy in every way, His character is perfect, and He is right, and He will judge the world because of sin, we need to come before the Father and say, Lord, we desperately need Your kingdom to come. We need Your Spirit to work. We need Your Holy Spirit to convict people of righteousness to convict people of judgment, to convict people that you are almighty God. It's not something we can accomplish. It's not something we can, we can do ourselves. We need to take a hold of the spiritual weapons that we have and that powerful weapon that we have, that 50 millimeter gun, that bazooka, that, that tank killer is absolutely praying, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We need some heaven here. We need God's kingdom here. We need people's evil to be subdued. We need people to quit living for themselves. We need people within our influence, within our circle of, of influence. We need people to come to place where they recognize that this world doesn't work and they need God desperately and need to embrace His kingdom and all the principles that follow in that. 
your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There's another application you can make in verse 10. We need to pray agreeing with God. We need to pray accepting whatever God says we're okay with. We don't fight God. It's not our kingdom. It's his kingdom that comes. It's not our ways. It's not our wants. It's what he wants, what he desires, what he knows is best for us. And we have that spirit of acceptance. In it. So when we petition the Lord, when we pray, and we come to the Lord, we, we believe we need this. When the answer is no, we're agreeable. Yes, Lord. When the Lord says to us, not now, wait. I'm waiting. I'm trusting. I'm still. We don't fight with God. We don't argue with God. We don't debate with God. We recognize that His way is always right and His way is always best. And so we have a yes, Lord, going on in our prayer. We pray, Lord, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we are absolutely agreeable with your ways, with your plan and what you want. Boy, do we need his kingdom to come. You need it. I need it. We all need it. We need. We're a, we're a people that have great needs. You know that? A couple weeks ago, I was talking with this fella. And I, it was kind of a weird deal that happened. We just, we were... We were at the store, and it just kind of happened. He started talking to me about this thing, and I was talking to him. It was at Home Depot. And I was getting a couple things, and, and, and he said, what do you do? You, you, a, you, a, you a plumber? I said, no, I just look like one. <laughs> no, I ain't a plumber. He said, well, you got to know. I said, no, I really don't know anything about it. I know nothing about this. He said, what do you do? I said, I'm a pastor. Oh, you are? Yeah. I said, oh, I don't go to church. Why? He said, everybody at church is perfect. They all look down at me. And I said, you need to come to my church. There ain't nobody perfect there. There ain't nobody perfect there. I hope he's here. I'm looking around. I don't see him. No, is anybody here think they're perfect? Anybody? Why do people think that we all think we're perfect? Anybody here perfect? Raise your hand if you're perfect. Anybody here perfect? I know you're not. There's no way you're perfect. Nah, I mean, honestly, does anybody here think they got it all together? Does anybody here think that you got it made, that you got it all answered, that you're, you're the cat's meow? Well, that old boy's a cat's meow. Anyway, I don't know what that means, but people say that. I loathe cats. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm allergic to cats. I think all cats should be catfish bait. Put them on the trot line. Oh, yeah. Don't back down. I'm not backing down. You can say what you want. They're evil. We all need, don't we? And it, why, why do people out there think that we, we're all judgmental? I mean, I, as I look around this room, there's some crazy people here. There's some people that don't have it all together. You've got a lot of warts and hang-ups and habits and issues, and many of you are wrong more times than you're right. I mean, we're, we're just, we're people of need. And, and we need to pray, recognizing that we are people of great need. We need the Lord. We can't live without prayer. We can't live without trusting in Him. We can't live without depending on Him. We need His kingdom to come. Boy, do we ever. I told him none of y'all were perfect. I said, I, I said, I'm not perfect, and none of the people that I know are perfect, and I did joke about, you, you just won't believe the things I know about some other people. They're, they're messed up, man. But I'm not a plumber, so move along. The next one, verse 11. Give us this day our daily bread. Hard to understand that today. You need bread? You're going to Walmart today, ain't you? Not even going to pray about it. You need daily bread? We're out of bread. I want to have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for lunch. Go to Walmart and get a loaf of bread. You don't pray. Just walk right in there. Get that loaf of bread. It used to be $1.50. Now it's $4.95. You get that bread. You go out to that little thing and you go, Doot! and and money never, trans, never changes hands. It comes out of your bank account magically. Put that little card in. Digits change somewhere else. You go home with your bread. You open that bread, make you a sandwich. 
Never prayed about it. Didn't have to pray about it. Now, I have been to Walmart a couple times here lately, and some of the shelves are getting kind of empty. It may come a time soon if things keep on going like they're going for reasons I have no idea. I don't understand supply and demand. I don't understand this and that and the other. I don't know why there's not any milk. I don't know why that happens. I don't have a clue about that. But it's kind of starting to happen a little bit. Wouldn't it be something if we get to the place in our lives where we have to pray for our daily bread? Now, we live in 2020. 2022. I knew it was some twos in there. 2022. If we lived in 1883, think about what it would be like. Think about how this verse would be different. Man, can you imagine if you're a farmer breaking ground in 1883? You're out in Parker County, over by Cool, somewhere in there, and you settle and you've got 10 acres, let's say, 20 acres, what you got? You got you a dairy cow if you want milk. You got chickens if you want eggs. You got chickens because, man, chickens. But can any of y'all make a chicken lay? Anybody? Can any of y'all make a cow produce milk? Anybody here got that? Did you Have you ever known anybody that can chicken whisper a chicken is going to lay an egg? I don't know anybody. I don't know anybody that can speak to a cow and it's going to make milk. I mean, some... Milk cows dry up, and then they become hamburger, right? I mean, that's the way that works. But if you're in 1883, you're going, you're going to take that mule, and you're going to have that plow, and you're going to plow you up some ground, and, and you're going to hopefully have some seed, and you're going to go buy seed. And when you put that seed in the ground, you're going to do your part. You're going to weed it. You know, you, in 1883, you're not watering it. You're not taking a water hose to it, are you? Every single day, Lord, give us today our daily bread. Lord, we recognize that if you do not send rain, we're not going to eat. That would change things, wouldn't it? That would change things drastically if we had to pray every single day for our daily bread. I think we're, I, I think we, we're, we're in a situation where we don't quite understand that verse right there. Because none of us have had to do it. We haven't had to do it. Now, we need to pray for our job. We need to pray we'll make money. We need to pray for this and that and the other. But, you know, in, in, in our economy today, you can find a job. And you can make enough money to go buy a loaf of bread. Still, it may change, but now you can. But in 1883, oh, that scripture right there. May the seed do its thing. How does a seed make corn? I don't know, but put it in the ground and, and spit on it and hope. You know, pray, Lord, please give us this day our daily bread. We need that. We need that daily recognition of where life comes from. We need that daily understanding that without God, we don't eat. That without God, we're not protected that without God, we're not going to be healthy, that God is on his throne and he is in that provisional seat taking care of us and meeting all our needs. You see, we don't do well when we don't pray for a loaf of bread. We don't do well in life. We don't do well when we just expect it to be there. We do better in the Christian life when there's not a net. I've seen the difference between people who pray with a net and those who pray without a net, there's a huge difference. There's a huge difference. We have a hard time getting our toes stepping in church. You know why? Because we don't have to every single day with, with energy and with passion and with, with desire and commitment pleading with the Lord to give us today our daily bread. And we need it. Don't... don't be deceived. Don't, don't be short-sighted. You may think you're making it on your own, but you're not. 
go through the exercise of recognizing that everything you have has come from God. The scripture tells us all good things to come from God. If you're healthy today, thank God. If you've got milk in the refrigerator, thank God today. If you've got bread in the cabinet, thank the Lord today. If you can go buy groceries, thank the Lord. Give us this day our daily bread. We need that so we don't neglect and take for granted everything God has done for us and He's doing. But we live in 2022 and we struggle with that. The next one, we desperately need this. And forgive us our debts. Man, do we need to be forgiven? We need to be forgiven. I need to be forgiven. You need to be forgiven. We need to be forgiven. We need to be forgiven of our sin. We need to be forgiven of our sins. We need to be forgiven. We desperately need forgiveness. We don't do well if we're unforgiven. Emotionally, we become bankrupt. Emotionally, we, we dry up. Spiritually, we dry up when we're not forgiven. We need to be forgiven. We're forgiven by God so that we can forgive others. And just like we need to be forgiven of our sins, we also need to forgive people who have sinned against us. We, we need to forgive our debtors. So, we need to be forgiven. We need forgiveness. We need to forgive and be forgiven. We need to be forgiven and forgive. We need both of those desperately. If you're not a forgiver, if you haven't been forgiven, if you're a grudge holder, if you are had allowed an issue to fester and grow in relationships, you know when you lay your head down at night, the longing of your heart is, man, I need to forgive and I need to be forgiven because it's a wound. It's just like you've been stabbed with a booty knife. There's a wound inside and you need to be forgiven and you need to forgive. And let me tell you why. Because unforgiveness does not work. Now that's really profound, isn't it? The reason why you need to be forgiven and the reason why you need to forgive is because unforgiveness does not work. You angry all the time? You probably haven't been forgiven, nor have you forgiven. It's a forgiveness issue. The wound just impacts you and, and, and you don't trust people. Forgiveness is at the heart of that. You can't mend the relationship. Forgiveness. Forgiveness is the start. Forgiveness is where it needs to happen. Unforgiveness doesn't work. And here in the Lord's Prayer, He says, we need to every single day pray, Lord, forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. Lord, we need You. We need Your power so that we can ask for forgiveness and we can forgive other people. Because if those two things are not taking place in your life, you're not doing well. You're not going to do well. It's going to end bad. Billy the kid is what's going to happen. Unless you believe he lived the rest of his life in Heiko as Bushy Bill Roberts, which I believe. But I kind of have my way about that. But if we're, if we're not forgiving and been forgiven, it, it, it doesn't work out well. Unforgiveness does not work. And you need to be forgiven and you need to forgive. And then verse 13. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We need that. We can't make it without God's help in this area. None of us have enough strength to resist all temptations. Now, there are some temptations that you probably got a little power, self-discipline to resist. But Satan knows which sin, which enticement, which bait you'll fall for. Guess what he's coming with? He's coming with the one that's going to ruin you. What did Jesus say about Satan? Satan. Jesus said that that guy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Peter says that 
our enemy, our adversary, the devil, waits along the dirt road like a roaring lion waiting to devour us. You and I struggle with three enemies. The world, the system of the world, the way the world operates, the way the world is, our flesh. I mean, for most of us, our flesh is enough. We ain't even going to talk about the world. We got our own issues right here in our flesh. Our anger, our hostility, our bitterness, our ego, our pride, right? We struggle. If we, if we can just get a hold of us, we'll be doing better. We need help. Lord, lead us not into temptation. Deliver me from evil. Deliver me from my mind. Deliver me from what I think about. Deliver me from my lust. Deliver me from my greed. Lord, I struggle in these areas and I need you. And, 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 and Jesus knows that we can't make it on our own when it comes to temptation. So you got the world, you got our flesh, and you've got Satan. And he's got demons. And he's got systems. And he's got things in place. And we can't make it on our own. We need. So what Jesus says here, pray then like this. We need to have a healthy understanding of God. Know that He's all loving and caring and know that He's holy and righteous and He will by no means clear the guilty. And so we come to Almighty God with respect, with honor. We come to Him trusting and believing, just embracing His love, but respecting His power to judge the swift judgment of God. And so it's a healthy relationship. We pray earnestly, fervently, that His kingdom will come, that His will be done, and all that means. We need that. We, we pray that He will give us our daily bread. And, and we need to pray every single day that God will meet the needs that we have, meet our needs. We, we're not want prayers, we're need prayers. And, and, and we need to come and ask for that power to forgive and to be forgiven, to be willing to say, Lord, I need your forgiveness. I need to repent. I need to say to you, Lord, that I am wrong. I was wrong. I have sinned against you, and I confess that I've sinned against you, and I want to walk in a clear, open relationship with you. And Lord, help me to forgive other people. I don't want to, I don't want to live under unforgiveness that does not work. And then, Lord, help me not to sin. Help me to fight it. Lord, help me not to give in to that temptation. Help me not to, to, to compromise what I know is right. Help me not to give in to what's wrong. Help, help me, Father, to stay, stay, steer clear of things that hurt me, hurt my family, hurt my loved ones. Help me, Lord. Help me not to give in to the things of this world, to give in to the things of this flesh. Help me not to give in to the temptations that Satan throws my way. We need to pray. And we need to pray these things. Let's pray. Let's pray this morning. Let's just use each one of those things and just for just between you and the Lord and then I'll close this out in prayer. Pray for, begin with adoration. Pray His kingdom come. Pray that He'll just meet your daily need. Pray for those that you need to forgive and pray for the forgiveness that you so desperately need and pray that the Lord will give you the strength to help you not to give in to temptation. There's about eight of your church members that are going to Uganda. The Brewers are going, and Shannon Young, and Jessica Kubosh, and Amy's going, and Chris Shea is going, and Sarah Meadows is going. Pray for them. Pray for us as we travel to Uganda to do the Lord's work. But just between you and the Lord, would you pray for a few moments?
Lord, you are almighty. There is no one like you. There's no one above you. You are our creator. You're our life sustainer. Lord, forgive us when we take for granted the life that we live today. Forgive us, Lord, that we take for granted the ability to think, the, the ability to breathe today. Father, you love us as we are, warts and all. You are always faithful to us. You are always caring. You are compassionate. You're kind to us. You're gracious to us. You have given us abundance of grace, mercy. Lord, your unconditional love, you love us better than we could ever love ourselves or love anyone else. Lord, you have loved us so much, you gave us your son. Lord, we bow before you recognizing you're almighty, but you love us and we can have that close walk with you, Lord. Thank you for that close walk. Thank you for the ability to hear your voice. Thank you, Father, for your comfort. Thank you, Lord, that when we have a pain that's beyond our ability, Lord, you can mend that pain. You can, you can heal that wound. And any wounds that we have today, because of your great love, we can offer that to you, Lord, and you'll begin that healing process. But, Father, we come before you recognizing your love and recognize your holiness and recognizing, Lord, that we are here by your grace. We do not deserve to be here. We have all sinned enough that we rightly deserve your punishment, your judgment. But yet, Lord, your grace. Father, I pray your kingdom will come, that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Lord. Father, we desperately need you today in our land. We need you in our world. We, we've got countries possibly going to war with each other now. We've got all kinds of hatred in our own land. Lord, we have police officers that are in, in, in harm's way every single day now. Lord, we have so much wrong happening. Lord, I, 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 I read your word and I read things like the love of most will grow cold. Lord, this is this day. We need you, Lord. We can't make it without your kingdom, Lord. We can't make it without your spirit falling and without your way being done in conduct. Lord, we can't afford any longer to go in our own way. We can't, the very best that we can do is no longer good enough. We desperately need you to work, Lord. We need renewal. We need revival, Lord. We need your kingdom to come. We need your people, Lord, who are apathetic to get fired up, to get warmed up, Lord. For those who are cold and, and their love has grown cold, wake them up, Lord. Father, we, we all need to be on fire for you. We all need to be living for you in such a way that, Lord, we are your instruments of mercy and grace and power, and we speak the truth, and we're willing to make strong stands. Lord, I, I recognize the urgency of this day. Help us, Father. May your kingdom come. May, Father, your spirit fall on us, and may we live for you every day. Lord, we need your we need your your power and our daily needs. Lord, thank you for the eggs you gave us this morning. Thank you, Father, for the, the milk we have, Lord. Thank you, Father, for the food that you provide. Thank you for our jobs, Lord. Thank you for the roof over our head. Thank you for all you provide for us every single day. Lord, we, we are so sorry that many of us, probably most likely, we have taken all your blessings for granted lately, Lord. And Father, we desperately need you to meet our daily needs. And Lord, forgive us. This week, if, if folks and your people here, Lord, are like me, we need your forgiveness. Lord, I've been forgiven of my sin. I know I'm right with you, but Lord, this week, I, I need your forgiveness. Forgive me for, for thinking the wrong things, saying the wrong things. Lord, forgive me for not being faithful. Forgive me, Lord, for not following through with something you said. Forgive me for missing things, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help each one of us. Help each one of us, Lord, to just every single day, Father, spend that time getting right with you and living in that sweet fellowship with you, Lord. Father, for any forgiveness that needs to take place, family members, loved ones, husbands, wives, brothers, sisters, co-workers, co-students, Lord, 
Words have been said. Actions have taken place, Lord. And there's broken relationships all around, Lord, these days. May we forgive. May we begin the relationship over. Thank you, Lord, for the forgiveness that we receive from you. Give us the ability, Lord. Give us the faith. Give us the strength to forgive others when they have sinned against us, Lord. Help us to show that forgiveness, that grace that you've given us. And Lord, lead lead us not to temptation. Give us strength. Give us resolve. Give us a determination to resist the world's temptings, the temptings of our flesh, and those sharp darts of the evil one. Lord, we have a great enemy, as you well know, and Lord, we need your help against the enemy. Lord, I admit that I cannot say no without you. I cannot resist that you. I desperately need you, Lord. Father, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Ushers, come forward.